Compose.com is a music collaboration website that allows musicians to collaborate on projects over the internet without ever needing to be together or even on the same continent. Wikipedia does a good job of explaining online music collaboration, so I'm going to paraphrase their article here. Music collaboration occurs when musicians in different places or groups work on the same album or song. Special software has been written to facilitate musical collaboration over the internet. Websites have also been created to enable creative music collaboration over the internet. For online music collaboration, a server-based system helps to coordinate the work for music projects with more than two musicians involved. Each musician needs to record, usually to a click track or metronome, and upload the instrument or vocals for the song. Then a designated internet music producer can edit for timing and tightness between all tracks. My target audience of collaborators was initially guitar players, so I decided to create a song that would inspire most guitarists to join along. In my experience, the style and feel that most electric guitar players like to play along with is a strong 12-bar blues a la Stevie Ray Vaughan. I fired up Ableton Live, my digital audio workstation of choice, and got to work. This type of music is heavily based in the feel of the drums, so I started there, browsing through the preset grooves of a virtual instrument called Easy Drummer from TuneTrack. The basic presets of Easy Drummer didn't have the strong shuffle that I was looking for, so I made a quick Google search for free blues patterns for Easy Drummer. Finding an appropriate download, I imported the patterns and began organizing the song. I began by auditioning and renaming the various drum patterns with logical names like intro, hat groove, ride, side stick, end fill, etc. This helped me to make the basic decisions for the structure of the song. I then played in the arrangement of these patterns while humming the 12 bar blues bass line to keep me on track. I listened back to this initial arrangement quickly and made simple edits as needed. I had established a song structure of AABBCBA. As soon as I had the drum track organized, I plugged in an electric bass and recorded the bass part. I fine tuned the drums and the bass sound, adding compression, distortion, and EQ plugins to emulate a big vintage sound. This sync tone helps you sync up all of the tracks that you might be receiving. So everyone, when they make a track, should have this sync tone at the beginning of, their, of, of each track. Now that I have all my tracks, and if you listen to them all together, you can kind of get some idea of what's happening. <laughs> Now that I have all my tracks together, what I want to do is I want to export them one by one. So I would mute uh, all the tracks except for the one that I was trying to um, spit out. I've got these WAV files here. I also went ahead and made a mix um, s just for reference. So there's my four files. Now, the one thing that I don't like about Compose.com is, well, you know, for their free membership, you can't upload WAV files. So I had to convert these to MP3 files. That's the only uh, format that they allow free accounts to use. So I converted them to MP3 files. Then I would switch over to uh, the website where I would upload the tracks. Um, first, though, I would, of course, need to create a user. I've already created a username, so I have create a project right here. Uh, generally, you would create a public project. So you'd click New Public Project. You'd just fill out the name description, um, whether you'd want to do uh, different types of licensing, and then some optional information. Generally, I would fill this stuff out right here just to help people out. Um, the key of the song, the BPM, in this case it's 56, um, and you would create a new project. Now, I've already done that, so I'm going to go to uh, my stuff and my projects. This project's called Boogie Talk Number 2, and as I click in it, here's all of the project information. When I click on tracks, you can see that I've uploaded um, a few tracks. They are organized by instrument, which is very handy. When you just click on um, listen, you can just listen to the mix. So here's the mix. All right, so we've heard that before. And uh, if you just wanted to click on one of the tracks, like my drum track, you can see um, it has an individual waveform for the track right here and uh, just tells you some information about who uploaded it. And you can listen to them individually on each track. Um, so now when I go back to the list, you might recognize that someone else has gotten involved, this member RB. And if I click on the member name, I can learn more about this uh, 
this member. And uh, R.B., whose name I guess I don't really know, Rick B. is his name. He is living in Philadelphia um, and is looks like a pretty active user of Compose.com. Um, you can see that there's a comment section down here that I've started to get involved with him. But that's kind of one of these places where the producer comes in, being the producer of your track, where you can um, decide what it is you want the track to sound like. There is a discussions area for the for each project. So I've um, submitted information about the song structure um, by bar so that you could know exactly when I was changing um, a modified um, blues form going to the four, for example, in the second bar. Um, the other thing that uh, I posted here was just some virtual instrument information. So um, information about the actual instruments that I was using. And I've also um, put that on my website, GrahamSpice.com, where you can um, see all that information. My summary of this is uh, online music collaboration can be a way to kickstart your creative process, meet new musicians, and um, explore new genres. Um, and certainly solicit musicians to play instruments on your recordings that you yourself cannot play. Websites like Compose.com make it very easy and fun for physically um, uh, separated musicians to collaborate.